Welcome to episode three of the Startup Dudes. I'm Todd. My name is Bill. He's my dad. And we're going to talk about company name searches, product name searches, you know, because that's part of the process of uh, startup, you know, with new companies and new products. So we thought that would be a good subject to cover. Um, so Todd, when I'm thinking about product names or company names, what I like to do is make a list of names that I like, uh, maybe 10, 15, or 20 names. Do you think that's a good starting point? I do, and I just wanted to address one issue on that. You have a lot of experience in this area, right? You've done 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 products. And you went through that same process for the products that you were naming and the companies that you named? Yeah, the, the, uh, it's, it's, I think it's over 50,000 products that I've brought to market. And uh, some of them were companies. Some of them were retail stores. I think there, I think there was 37 retail stores, I believe, different ones. But uh, I was doing these for major companies. It wasn't like I was the entrepreneur. I was a, a corporate executive, and I was doing it for Disney, or I was doing it for MGM Grand, or I was doing it for Tommy Toys or United China Glass Company, which is a gift company. So um, I would say, you know, senior management many times would say this is what the name is. You know, like in the case of opening the Disney Anna store for Disneyland, which was one of my highlights, if you will. Um, that became the forerunner to the Disney stores, the Disney Anna store. And uh, they told me that was the name. They said the name of this store is the Disney Anna store. So I didn't make a list or I didn't choose it. But I would say maybe 10, 20 percent of the 50,000 were names that I came up with. You know, with my team, we all kind of worked together and came up with this name list that I was referring to. I think it's a good place to start. And so people often say, well, how do I know what to start with? Well, you start with what you like. Um, you might consider it something that's easy to spell and something that's not too long. Um, one thing you need to keep in mind, though, is that you can't come up with a name. Let's say it's a product that you're coming up with. Uh, they're trying to find a name for you can't name it what it is and if you, because if you do that and you have any hope or desire to get a trademark they're going to refuse it because it's going to be deemed to be merely descriptive so if it's a kitchen towel that i'm naming coming up with a name for i can't call it a kitchen towel no you can't and at least not if you want to get a trademark i guess you could do it and, and just kind of run with it but um no and the reason for that is because they're going to refuse it now um I think a great example of, of, of a company that has a very well-known name that previously was descriptive and now is, and became not descriptive would be um, Q-tips. So Q-tips really sort of describes what it is. It's a, it's a cotton swab, you know, and so the, the trademark office might have taken the position that, no, we're not going to let you secure a registration on that because really you're trying to name it what it is, and that's not really fair to the marketplace. So, but we will allow you to register on the secondary registry, and there are some disadvantages to that, but not many. And then after a while, after it's acquired secondary meaning, and people know it to be your product, then we can move it to the principal. Oh, really? So, yeah, you don't want to do descriptive if you, if you can help. So, in the case of uh, Kleenex, they didn't want to call it uh, nose tissue or anything like that. They came up with Kleenex, which wouldn't cause a problem. It's a great, actually, that's a great example of a, of a, um, a brand that would be, have been deemed to be fanciful. Fanciful names like Kleenex, um, Microsoft is a combination of microcomputer and software together. Those are made up terms, Xerox. Those are actually new pretty, words. They're brand new words. And so you don't run into the issue with uh, competing names, confusingly similar issues, or descriptive issues. So on so your they name sell list, right through. so on your name list, excuse me, yeah. on your name list, uh, it's not a bad idea, then, is it, to come up with some combinations Absolutely. of syllables or words? Mm -hmm. You're less likely to have a conflict, is it what you're saying? I, I definitely less, at least on the trademark side. So that's that's a pretty good strategy. Um, regarding domains, I think you were going to ask me about domains. Probably a good idea, especially if you want the .com, you do a quick search on any number of services out there, GoDaddy, so you can do a quick domain search and see if it's available. The, domain, the .coms, I think, were much more valuable at one point than they are now. They're a little less valuable in the sense that you can still be found fairly easily on Google with a non.com, like a .tv or a .vegas or something like that. So, but I think still, would you agree that the .com is still kind of the, 
a premier. Yeah, I think you try. I think you try. try. I would try to yeah. get a dot com, and I would maybe throw some names out if I couldn't get a dot com. But you're right; it doesn't. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, I wouldn't. It definitely wouldn't say that it's something that's just in the way of you going forward. One other thing about names. So that's product or service. But what if you want to name your company something, um, or what about your LLC? Now your LLC is your kind of your behind the scenes company name. Um, that may be something you don't worry about getting a registration on, you know, because there's, it, it's something that is not going to be in the public eye. It doesn't really associate with your products. It may not even be at all related to what you do. Like we could have the Bill, Bill and Todd LLC. We're not going to probably spend the time and money to register that as a trademark. But if we had a, a really cool product or maybe the name of our web series here, we're probably going to trademark that. That might be worthwhile because it's, it's what we're known as in the, in the marketplace. Got it. So if, okay, so starting with the list, let's say that I come to you with a list of names. Uh, what are you going to do with that list? I mean, where do you, what's your next step with letting me know whether these are, these, these, this name has a good future, this name doesn't have a good future? First place I would, I would go, if you said, I, wanna, I think I want to get a trademark on that at some point, is I'd go into the trademark database and do a search. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description of a really good video the trademark office themselves puts out about how to do a proper search. Um, there are some tips and things, and you may want to use those tips to narrow the search down. But first thing I would do is type it into the um, trademark search window and see what comes back. Sometimes you're going to be a little shocked to learn that maybe hundreds of, of names come back, and that's not necessarily indicative of the fact that you can't do it, but it means that there's other companies out there using that word. So can we narrow that down by putting quotes around it and maybe, or narrowing it down by attaching it to particular classes. Yes, we can do that. And then also, um, if you don't indicate live or dead, the dead ones will also come up, which may not be an issue if they're dead. You don't need to worry about it as much. So that's where I would start first. And then also remember that with trademark work, you're going to have to select a category or a classification to get your, um, to attach to your mark, which would either be a good or a service. So you could do appliances, you could do, um, car wash services. I mean, there's hundreds of different categories. So Steve Jobs in the very beginning, uh, when he formed his company, he had to, he liked the word Apple. Mm -hmm. uh, he had to, he had to see if Apple was available in what the classification of computers. Yeah. And, you know, and by the way, they're adding new categories all the time because there's a lot of things like holograms. Maybe it wasn't an issue back in the early eighties, late seventies, but microcomputers was available. You would go in there and type in Apple and see if there's anyone else that has a registration, trademark registration within the category of microcomputers. And at that time there wasn't. Um, and it's a great name if you think about it. I mean, we, we sort of like, it's just sort of part of our daily lives, Apple, phone, Apple, or whatever. But, you know, Apple had nothing to do with computers. And now it has everything to do with computers. Yeah, it's pretty, Anything it's pretty cool. And they took a bite out of that Apple, you know. And, so yeah. it's very, yeah. very... Out of your very, out of your wall as well, but the uh, but Apple had a connotation, in, at least in my mind, uh, a scientific or a physics kind of feel to or education. It. Did you give the teacher an Apple? That and then I was thinking of gravity. You know the, the movie. yeah. That uh, so it was pretty good. It was yeah. pretty thoughtful it's of him to use like Apple. If I do say it myself. So, um, the, so the next thing that you're going to have to deal with is what type of response can we expect back from the trademark office? We're only going to cover two of the main responses. There are numerous different ways that the trademark office can come back, but the two most common ways they respond are by refusing your application, one, because it was confusingly similar. So they've done their own search and they've determined in their legal opinion, it's a, it's a legal standard that they're using, that it's confusingly similar to one that's already within the database or that's already registered. And so at that point, you've got some decisions to make, right? You can abandon your application and say, this is too much work, I don't want to deal with it. You can try to deal with it yourself and, and come up with some arguments as to why it's not confusingly similar, or you can kick it out to a, a trademark attorney to have to do it, which can be kind of expensive. Um, the other response you might get back, which can actually be worse in some ways, is that it's passed through the first layer of no issues with similar marks, so we don't see any issues there, but we think it's too descriptive. They will say, the trademark examiner will come back and say it's merely descriptive. And at that point, what they're saying is that we don't 
we can't give you the rights that you're asking for because it merely describes what it is. And at that point, you, you have to essentially write a legal brief using case law as to why you, you're you know, presenting arguments as to why your name is not more descriptive which can be a little complicated. Have you ever had to deal with that? I have. Your experiences? Yes, and um, so far I've never lost one of those. They're, um, you know, I, I've been... And that category of work is called um, ma managing the rejection, or yeah. I don't know what do you I mean, call you could, it. It's responding to an responding, office action. Responding to an office Yeah, and again, there's lots of different ways that they can, that the trademark office can respond, but that's a very common one. And I think that at that point, that's where most sort of lay people or, or, or startups, you know, or people that maybe are, are new to this type of stuff, we'll just say, I'm not, I don't know what to do here. So in a future video, we'll actually take you through, and I'll walk you through an example of one that we did that was uh, where, we were, where we prevailed on how to do that. So those are two common responses. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that you're dead, it doesn't mean that it's the end of the line, but it, there's a, it's a critical juncture at that point about what to do next. So uh, just, to kind of, just to kind of summarize and wind, wind it up, uh, the, the different entities that we're going to be dealing with in terms of startup, uh, is it pretty much the domain name and the company or the product name? Am I missing anything? Is that I think kind of what we're going to deal with in the beginning? Yeah, so you're going to name, and as I mentioned a little while ago, you may, you may come up with a completely different name for your company. So we, you know, we have startup dudes, but maybe our company is you know, creative consultants. It doesn't, really, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same. So you've got your company name. You've got your product or your service names. You may have more than one product, and, um, and then you probably should secure a domain. Social media is a whole different animal. I mean, back when we first started this video series, we, we liked a different name, and we, we found out that someone else was using it, although they weren't using it consistently. We thought since it was the really early stages of our company that we didn't need to really take a chance. So we came up with a better name, I think. Actually, I like this name better. I don't know if you do. Yeah, I do too. We won't tell you what the other one was. And um, we think we're, we're, we're okay. So after a little while, we'll be filing our own. Uh, in fact, maybe, maybe that's the one to, to have a, a video on is, is our actual application. That's very good idea. So, so yeah, I think. That idea just came up spontaneously right this moment. Yes, you, you were witness to it. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, that's, I think that covers it for today. Okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, watching episode three. Don't forget to look in the notes. We'll uh, share some information uh, about that uh, trademark video that I was telling you about. And also, I'll um, provide you with some information on sort of the steps one, two, three, four on what to do when you're doing your own search. So, hope to see you soon. Let's see if it worked this time.